Hello, everyone. Welcome to the ZBN podcast for the week of January 12th, 2015. I am Spiegelwee, your host. With me, as always, we have Hex. Hands off my bread. And uh, we also have Zyber. I can't let you do that, Star Fox. And also, uh, as returning as a special guest, we have Mr. Chris from Britain. We need your help, Star Fox. And uh, everyone's doing their best uh, Star Fox impressions today because... This is the uh, this is a special episode. We're going to be doing a full Star Fox series uh, retrospective and looking forward into the future. As we all know, the Star Fox Wii U is coming out this year, presumably. Uh, so we wanted to just go ahead and talk about a lot of that stuff. Um, so this is going to be a shorter episode, by the way. We say now. Uh, first <laughs> yeah, off, we, so yeah, watch it be like an hour and a half. I, no. I, I have no idea how I'm going to find enough stuff to say about Star Fox. But, I'm uh, sure between the four of us, we can come up with plenty. I am we, never ha- we have never had any issues coming up with enough stuff to say, so, so we'll see. I have see. more than enough things. Oh, I imagine. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, one, thing I, one thing I wanted to get out of the way before we started was I have said in the past that like Star Fox, to me, is a series that is mostly like just mediocre to good and like with one really, really great game and I, st- I will stand by that um, but just keep that in mind when I'm saying stuff about about each game like I'm not I'm not trying to hate on the franchise as a whole I just don't think as a whole it's totally all fantastic yeah and we'll get into our, our thoughts on why as well yeah uh, okay so just let's just go down the list um, first game Star Fox Super Nintendo 1993 uh, was one of the first ever like polygon 3d games uh that was on a home console obviously pc had right. a bunch of those. um so who who's played this game again in this group i know i have i have as well everyone raise your hands yeah everyone raise your hand um <laughs> i think you and i are the only two actually okay all right so so go ahead what, what were your thoughts on this game I, well, I don't have a whole lot to say it, about it it was one of the first games i ever played because my first console was a NAS, uh, snes so uh, between that and uh, what, Killer Instinct, those were th- two of the first games I ever had. Um, and yeah, it was great. Uh, I never got past like the second level as a kid, so <laughs> and I, didn't, Did you, I haven't played it since. You've so. never gone back and tried to beat it? No, I didn't. I haven't. So, but yeah, I, I have fond memories of playing the game and trying to beat the first boss and how the first boss kind of had like a callback in 64, and that was cool. Uh, that's the only nostalgia I could have for that game because I don't know anything else about it other than <laughs> kind of like the trivia behind it, like how it utilizes Mode 7 of the Super FX chip and things like that. Or was it Mode 7? I don't remember. I it, don't know. It was the Super FX chip and it was huge. And before that, Polygon games were all vector line based. And uh, yeah. This was different. This was filled in Polygon. Oh, yeah. Flat oh, yeah. shading. <laughs> Beautiful. All those pixels. I will say uh, regarding that, like, I always thought that that game looked really cool. Like, even though it was obviously it really simple, like, I don't know what it is. It's just like you look at it and you're like, yeah, that's that's a well, game I, right I there. I think part of it is like you're looking at it and it's not trying to be something grander than it is. Like, it, it knows that it's never going to look like photorealistic. So it kind of takes its stylized approach to the landscape, how it has like, these lines. It's almost like a football field and, and yeah. stuff like that. So it, it knows what it's capable of looking like and it kind of takes that to its fullest potential rather than trying to like imitate real life and then do a terrible job at it but it would look good back then but it would look terrible in the future and we know looking back at photorealistic games today they all look like crap but that game doesn't look i mean it looks primitive but it doesn't look bad you know what I'm, you know what i'm saying right yeah it has a certain uh, look to it and you sort of have to appreciate it for what it did at the time and things like that. Yeah, and that's kind of like a lot of SNES games were like that. They knew how to play with the aesthetic to to where it doesn't look too aged when you look. Super back. Ni- Super Nintendo's best games, like its best looking games in general, they they all have that like kind of quality that it just looks really nice. Like Super Mario World looks awesome today still, and then we're talking about literally like a twenty four year old game at this point. And uh, what it's Super Metroid looks amazing, and a link to the past. The, the color schemes are like so vibrant, and Super Nintendo just kind of had that. They kind of had that graphical thing down. It just all those games still look awesome today. Yeah, definitely. Yes, I must say though, it was very confusing when I saw the Andros assist trophy in Smash Bros. 
<laughs> oh, I imagine. <laughs> oh, the original Android. Yeah, I, I was confused too because at the time I had never, um, I had never got to the original form in Star Fox sixty four. Spitting guy, he is. Yeah. Yep. I always wondered why they used that particular Andros in Smash Brothers, but I guess it would look, it looks better than like this gross old monkey looking <laughs> dude with a gross beard. <laughs> So, well, if he explodes and you just see eyeballs, yeah, man. exactly. Eyeballs and weird, like, brain looking thing. Yeah. Gross. Everything about they, Andros is gross. Do you think they designed Andros yeah. to, like, look like one of the designers in the game? That that seems like an inside joke that uh, that they would want to do. <laughs> Either that like, or it sounds like you're insulting <laughs> somebody that worked on it. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know the team who did the right. game. I don't, no, so. I don't think so. Um, I mean, he's <laughs> kind of got, like, got that, like, Japanese looking beard going on, but that's what I that, was thinking because he does look, he looks more like a human almost more than a monkey. Like, I'd say he has a lot of human qualities in his face. Well, yeah, but no, so I don't, basically I don't think, that's you think, uh, you think Miyamoto looks ugly, basically. Yeah, I think <laughs> well, he doesn't have yeah. Miyamoto's eyes, and that's like his distinguishing feature, right? <laughs> He's got those adorable little tiny eyes with that smile that <laughs> the happy mask salesman obviously stole. <laughs> Okay, so Hex thinks that Miyamoto is the happy mask salesman and is adorable. So let's move on. Um, so we have that on subjects. record now. Great. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, we can... Um, well, yeah. Let's, uh, <laughs> next, was, uh, yeah. <laughs> next was Star Fox 64, obviously released for the Nintendo 64. The quintessential, uh, was, quintessential was Star the, Fox game. Was not the 64th Star Fox game, in fact, but it was released on the Nintendo 64. Oh. Uh, this game was the first game to ever use the Rumble Pack, which I may be incorrect about this, but was this the first uh, system ever to use Rumble in the controllers based on like adding that attachment to it? Uh, well, mm. yes, it was the first one to like use it, but it, I think PlayStation beat them to implementing it directly into the controller right, after that's that. Right, that's correct. So. But yeah, the, the concept hadn't been on home consoles until the Rumble Pack, so... Have any of you guys ever played Star Fox 64 with the Rumble Pack? Out of curiosity. I don't think Probably. I have, actually. I never had nope. a Rumble Pack, I don't think. I remember being... I remember uh, being young and playing the game over and over again. And I remember having that big chunky thing plugged into the back of my controller. And then it rumbled and it's like... Ah. <laughs> and then I'd die and it'd rumble and you know I don't uh, actually memories. play with rumble that often like in my games today either like it actually took me off guard when I plugged in my new GameCube controller for Smash and it started rumbling when I was playing I was like whoa what's happening because I don't really do it so <laughs> the gamepad does that too it's really yeah the gamepad yeah, is awful I turned it off <laughs> because it was like a bad giant cell phone Oh man, I got I gotta have the rumble in my games when I play, man. It's like it adds to the uh, it adds to the experience. It immerses you. I don't you. think it does because sure. like well. it never corresponds. Like my hands don't feel that in the actual situation that I'm playing. Like if I like kick somebody, I don't feel my hand go. <laughs> so I don't feel like it immerses me. I feel like it it only exacerbates the issue of like trying to falsify the immersion. But I don't know. Well, I think some games do it better than others. Some will just mindlessly rumble all the time. Right. And sometimes it will, like... Like in Smash difference. Brothers, like, you run and it rumbles. Like, why does that Why does that <laughs> need to be a thing? The gamepad does rumble too much. <laughs> you're, make, you're making it seem like that this is something that, like, really disrupts the gameplay and is terrible. It really like, distracts me. I don't feel it at all. Like I, I well, you you're just used said, to it. That's why. But you, but you just said the GameCube controller rumbles when you run. I'm like, I've never even noticed this before. Like, I didn't even <laughs> know that. So. I'm just saying that it's silly that you'd have to have like tactile feedback for running. But anyway, that's mm. not even on the subject of Star Fox. <laughs> what were we talking about again? We were talking about the Star Fox 64. Star Fox 64. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so of course, other facts about this game before we actually like dive into it. It did coin uh, do a barrel roll. Uh, can't let you do that, Star Fox. Um, among other popular internet sayings. Uh, and I think it's generally agreed upon this is the best Star Fox game and really one of the best games on Nintendo 64 in general. Is that, uh, is that an accurate assessment? Oh, I yeah, definitely. Yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about this game, you guys. I, I, I've actually never played it on 64. My first experience with this game was on the 3DS. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, well, I'll start. <laughs> yeah, go for it. I, I grew up this, playing this game a lot. And I have many a memory. 
And I always always remember how um like even like the first level, Corneria, it has like the most simplest music, but because I've played it so much, I can just remember how the music goes. And I just I just played the game so much that I can remember loads of stuff about it. I'm just gushing right now, really. You sound like you're on a nostalgia trip, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> can you sing all the music to us right now? Yeah, I was about to say, please sing Corneria. Uh I've got a sore throat um yeah, oh, okay, okay fine. We'll, we'll give you the. <laughs> we'll let you off the hook this time. We were going to use that as intro music for the. Uh, but now you owe us one yeah. song. He owes us uh, Gerudo Valley on guitar, too, if you remember. Oh, God. <laughs> if you go back and listen to episode like six or whatever it was. <laughs> I'm still working on that, I promise. Oh, I got another question for you, Chris. This article I'm looking at says that um, uh, Star Fox 64 was also known as Lilat Wars. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, over here it's called uh, Lilat Wars because so, but, trademarks. But you still um, refer to it as Star Fox 64. Oh, well, because I live on the internet, I've sort of gotten used to how everyone calls it. <laughs> so I just call it that now. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Lilat Wars, that's what it was called over here. It's a really, oh, and the, it's a really dumb I didn't, <laughs> The um, first game on the SNES was actually called Star Wing over here. Huh. Yeah. Is Star Fox... Is Star Fox like a thing over there? Like, it, what, what oh, Star with Fox the release, even... with the release of Star Fox Adventures, uh, that's when they got the trademark for like Europe and Australia. <laughs> so, what so exactly was from the... was there a product called something close to Star Fox that yeah, that's what I was yeah, caused there, them to not let? Yeah, there was a um, vaguely remember it's like there's this Atari game or something that was called Star Fox, and <laughs> I guess it upheld and Nintendo couldn't use it in Europe for some reason. <laughs> I don't Bummer. know. That's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, Hex. What did you think of Star Fox sixty four? Obviously, you're you're not as uh, blinded by rose colored glasses as as Chris is. <laughs> oh well, this is also a game I never really completed. Um, at least not to the fullest extent. I did. I do remember at least watching somebody beat Andros. I don't remember if it was actually me. Uh, but yeah, I think it's it's cool how the the gameplay evolved from the SNES game into the 64 where it, it's kind of like memorizing a sequence of events in each level, how to, how to like maximize all of the opportunities that you have to collect all of the things or, uh, Get the high like, schools. Right. And I think, I don't know if, if assault really captured that. I never played it, but I feel like that's one of the, like the, the quintessential elements to Star Fox. It's like trying to memorize each level and how it unfolds because it's kind of like an arcadey experience where yeah. Yeah. it's not like an exploration kind of thing, so it's like you're learning the game. Because what it boils down to... That's how you master to, it, right? Yeah, what it boils down to, it's basically an on-rail shooter, right? But right. like different things happen based on what you do, and that's that was always one of the things that intrigued me about it. And this game in particular, um, like you said, uh, Star Fox Assault, you, were men- you mentioned it, it never, really, it never really got that, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's one of the cool parts of it. And I also like that they introduced new vehicles, uh, even if, if I mean, I have fond memories of them. I think maybe it's not as widely regarded as a good thing. Like the Landmaster might have been not as well received as I kind of feel like it. I did, but uh, I don't. I don't remember liking the submarine. I don't remember what it was called. But uh, the Blue Marine. Yeah, uh, I didn't like that one as much. But I thought the Landmaster was cool, and I kind of hope that the next one kind of brings back the. Uh, differentiated gameplay between vehicles again I, th- I think that'd be cool yeah that's cool i always liked how um you obviously have the r wing and then i believe there's uh off the top of my head one two two levels that use the land master yeah i think so. and those are fun and they provide a, a different type of challenge um on macbeth which is a later level there's this part where you have to sort of drive along the right side of the track to hit the right switches mm-hmm. and that's yeah. like really tough even today for me <laughs> to do uh, but yeah they provide different challenges and shake the game up which is really good yeah when we get to talking about the the next one i feel like i'm going to come back to how they could do vehicles in a cool way but yeah 64 that was also like the last in-house developed nintendo game wasn't it because the last Adventure... in-house developed Star Fox yeah. game, that is, yeah. What did I was I actually going to bring that up. What did I say? Did I say Nintendo? 
Yeah, you said anyway, Nintendo games. Yeah, last in-house developed <laughs> Star Fox game. Uh, yeah, so yes. Adventures was Rare. Uh, Assault was Namco, I think. Namco, yeah. yeah. And then Namco. Command was, I don't even know. It was Q, Q games. games. Q Games. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, yeah. First, um, Zyber, I wanted to get your impressions of Star Fox 64, because I know, like me, you've never played the N64 one. But you played the 3DS one. So what did you think of that? I was just reminded that I actually did play the 64 one with, uh, like, battling with friends. I remember that we were using oh, right. the... Um, yeah, it had a multiplayer. I yeah, never pl- yeah, I, I never think. experienced that. Uh, I I think we were doing Landmasters, and I was all like, this is horrible. Why are we doing this? Let's go back to Smash Bros. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. But um, the 64 3DS version, I actually never played through it once. And I was all like... Eh, I'll just go back to Mario. I mean, <laughs> I pretty much went through the worst version of it through the path to the end. And oh yeah, you mean basically the the beginner's version? Yeah, yeah. I was Ooh. just like, dang it, Slippy, why'd you have to kill yourself? <laughs> I, don't know, I always like the part where Slippy kills himself. That's uh, that's my favorite part of the game. I was all like, I'm about to kill this thing. You don't have to go suicide bomb it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a game where you have to play through it several times to be able to figure out everything but it's nice in that way because it's also like a 45 minute game basically yeah, like, exactly. you really can you can do multiple playthroughs in like three hours which and is for yeah. some reason they have us you're able to save in the 3ds version i actually yeah. I, ha- I have used that save feature like when i'm just like walking around and i just want to play Star Fox for like five minutes and then just put it away it actually it as that kind of game it really lends itself well to the handheld system like there's a lot of games on 3DS that do that, that um, that act more like uh, legitimate handheld games, um, even even though they like they were on N64 or whatever. Mm. That they they remaster them in a way that they make it they make it playable in small chunks, which I think works really well. Yeah, that's true. Sadly, I can't uh, play it because I lost it with my all my other games in the 3DS back two Christmases ago. Oh man, that sucks. Man, all these stories uh, of people losing their 3DSs, it makes me sad. Speaking of <laughs> things that suck, we're going to move on to Star Fox Adventures. Oh, man. Whoa. Whoa. So, yeah, so no. shots Whoa. fired. Okay, no, some, I'm, we no, have no, some no. shots fired. Shots fired, shots fired, okay. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I like this game a lot. This is what, like this is actually my second favorite Star Fox game, and people are going to crucify me for it, but I don't care. Cause I, well, it's quite like honestly, the le- it's like you can't go back to SNES and think it's like the really good after after 64, because 64 was like a so much better improved version of, of the original. And then so... Well, that- Assault and and Commando are the only other ones that you can compare to 64 and Adventure. I think is better than those two. So, Adventures you really can compare more to a game like, uh, like the Legend Zelda. of Zelda. <laughs> like that's, that's really what it's like. The yeah. um, the GameCube actually had a lot of those like action adventure titles in like the early 2000s. Um, of course, it had Wind Waker and then and then this game uh, and also Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which I will uh, I will talk more about. Where are we later. going? Where are we going? <laughs> Uh, the, but those games all have kind of that Legend of Zelda spirit, and I I really liked Star Fox Adventures for that. And yeah, it wasn't Star Fox sixty four, and I can understand why it offended people. But mm-hmm. take this like take the Star Fox license off of it, and then look at the game and think like, oh, you know, like maybe Dinosaur Planet is not that bad of a game. You know, it's solid like eight mm-hmm. out of, eight out of ten. Yeah, and it's 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 kind of like the whole banjo nuts and bolts kind of thing, but. In this instance, yeah. In this instance, the like the core of the game is actually kind of solid, you know. Um, yeah, it, if people don't know, I'm sure most people listening to this do know. But Star Fox Adventures was originally going to be uh, just a game called Dinosaur Planet, and then when they when one of the execs at Nintendo saw the Fox character, they had like, why don't you just use Star Fox because that'll yeah, have that was me brand no, recognition. Who said that. <laughs> And it uh, did sell. I'm looking up the numbers right now. I know it did sell fairly well. Yeah. Um, you had a lot of hype from Nintendo Power and things like that. But looking back, I wish they didn't do it. I wish they didn't put Star Fox on that, on like slap Star Fox into the game, basically. Because it's like the yeah. R-Wing sections are basically like tacked on loading sections, right? It's like you barely do anything in the flying sections. They're just doing it to get from planet to planet. And it's like, yeah, by the way, this much. is a Star Fox game. Remember that? I was kind of offended by that, honestly. That was like my biggest problem with the game. By the way, yeah. it sold 1.87 million units, uh, which was makes it the third best-selling Star Fox game. Yeah. Well, that mm. makes sense. I mean, well, that's two, like I coming off the hype of, yeah. coming off the hype of Star Fox 64, probably mm-hmm. when the series was at its 
most uh, popular. So right. Chris, slap on Star Fox on it. You know? Chris, as the as the big Star Fox uh, guru in our group here, what what did you think of Adventures? Well, I played that game when I was younger, like well, what was that twelve years ago? And I remember watching my brother play it as well. I, I grew up with like my brother, my other siblings playing Star Fox sixty four and also Adventures. Also, um, I remember enjoying Adventures, and you had the whole tricky mechanic with the little dinosaur pet. And it was a really good adventure game, to be honest. And I remember enjoying it. <laughs> I forgot to say, um, growing up, I, used, I was actually kind of scared of Andros because he's a creepy weirdo. I used to have <laughs> nightmares of him. Oh, so no. when I when I got to the end of Adventures and he shows up and it's like oh good and then I run out the room yeah, and he's get my like brother gross to play zombie it Andros too <laughs> thank you exactly. spoiler alert thanks I appreciate that <laughs> you have had so much time to play this there's no excuse I I have played I just haven't beat it yet I'm so close you've had You're so really much close. time to beat this game there's no excuse I've only had it since 2007 heck jeez <laughs> well, what year is it anyway backlog, backlog episode foreshadowing <laughs> um, what. So anyway, Andros is a creepy weirdo. Yeah. And uh, Adventures is a great game. And it could have been better, but yeah. Yeah, there it's kinda go. like it's kinda like rare trying to trying to basically re reinvent the action adventure. Not reinvent, but like trying to answer to the the action adventure genre before it died away. Uh leaving people like or games like Zelda to kind of be the the forerunners for that kind of older genre but yeah it's interesting how that has affected the Star Fox series going forward because like like most Miyamoto games Star Fox was kind of light on the story uh in the first two games and then they started introducing all of these deeper elements and uh, love story love story and the stuff only like that. is it the <laughs> only true Nintendo love story is that uh is that uh, wrong talking to say? about <laughs> no it's not right that way. Like you got Link and Zelda. Uh, That's not a, a love story. In at least Skyward Sword. No, um, I'm not. They're just friends, okay? Like, oh, yeah, Link, don't Link got that. major friend zoned in that game, dude. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't call that a Nintendo love story though, because uh. it's a third party developer. They're a second party developer, so it's like it's not a real Nintendo love story. Nintendo doesn't do love mm. stories. The you most mean, love story. In fact, that... Toad and Toadette aren't even a guy and a girl. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Adventures was an interesting they don't anomaly. Have a sex. Well, we can debate that. <laughs> anyway, mm, there's not really a debate if they're actually <laughs> mushrooms, but the thing is, they're not mushrooms. They're toads. Mario eats the mushrooms. They're toads. Mario also mm. breaks the bricks that were toads. Oh no! We don't fridge talk about horror. <laughs> How do we get um, on this? Anyway, Star Fox. <laughs> this is sort of the nature of this particular show. We're just kind of going. I don't know. Our last episode was so successful with so many views. We just had to do another episode like it. Um, by the way, your this, sarcasm. Is a good, this is a good time to throw in a plug. Um, if you do like our show, go ahead and subscribe and uh, and like us. And um, also, we do have a website, www.thezb.net. Uh, the ZB.net is sort of our little area of the internet where we talk about whatever we want to talk about in uh, article form and it's we got a lot of cool stuff on there that you can check out we do post the podcast there so you won't ever miss an episode if you check in at the zb.net and if you really love us make us some cookies yeah cookies are good too. take a also, video of the cookies and yeah then and also link. click on the ads what ads the ads that we have on our videos on we youtube have ads yeah if you click on the ads we make like a like half a cent or whatever so I don't think I know because I have ad blocks. So every time I listen to the podcast, <laughs> yeah. because I apparently I do, I do listen the to the podcast, uh, I yeah. never see the ads. So yeah, we're 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 the ones that aren't giving ourselves money. We could. Well, I guess a, that would work. Against, would, would that work? Like, can you? No, watch it's a, against YouTube policy. You're not supposed uh, to do that. So, but hey, if anyone out there is a big fan of the show and they really want to help us out, just go ahead and open up like a hundred tabs and go click on all the ads. <laughs> Yeah, do that, sure. But you have to click on it? I thought it was based on, like, view time. Anyway, um, well, there's a view let's time, not get into this, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know tool. what else to say about Adventure other than it's weird. It's I mean, it's a good-ish game to me. I, I didn't love it. Uh, I mean, when I played it the first time, I, I felt like the Zelda uh, tendencies that, that the game had, and so I liked it for that reason, but looking back at it and I, I recently watched an LP of Star Fox Adventures by 
Masayanella on YouTube, and uh, it kind of feels a little bit dated looking back. Uh, like some of the puzzles were really obvious. Um, I, I think you could probably say that about a lot of rare games, though. Like a lot of yeah, them seem kind of dated. Um, mm. But yeah, pretty good. Good for its time. And if you're one of those people who are out there and like just hate on Star Fox Adventures because everyone else hates it, like give it a legitimate shot. Like actually go play it. You know, don't don't just say like, oh, that game sucks because it's not in the R wing. Like it's a legitimate game. It's like I said, just strip away the Star Fox IP and you've got like a decent adventure game. So <laughs> anyway. I, will, um, I just want to say like one thing, like, you know, when you like you love a series so much and then when it like it deviates to something else and you can explore the universe in a different way. I mean, I always like that. And because I love Star Fox so much, it's fun to be in an adventure Star Fox game. So, yeah, that's, that's always interesting fun. that you say that because, like, I often view series as, like, something that shouldn't be, like, adulterated by introducing some weird new gameplay mechanics. And so, when I see games like Adventures, like, you ruined the streak. You kind of, like, there's a blemish now on the perfect gameplay design. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's like a thing they had, But that's kind of like. I don't know if that's a valid opinion to have because... Well, I was going to say, what about games like Paper Mario right. or even Metroid... Or what about Metroid Prime? You know, Metroid Prime is a perfect example. Exactly. Um, but I think, I mean, it, it kind of depends on, like, the circumstances. Like, Paper Mario is a bit of a spin-off. Uh, you could say that Prime was their way of transitioning into the 3D, uh, whereas Star Fox has always been in 3D, and then they kind of threw in this weird thing, and it doesn't really match, and so it kind of feels out of place to me. But again, it's, mm. it's really how what your perspective is like. Yeah, that, I, think that it, I think it is neat that you can kind of explore the world and they could kind of expand the lore in a way that they wouldn't yeah. have been able to do if it was always flying. Um, yeah. Whether or not people are interested in that, that's up to the individual. But yeah, I think it's cool that you that you have that perspective. Okay. Yeah, so let's move on. We got a cu- we got a couple more games to talk about. Um, we're gonna go. I I don't really have anything to say about Star Fox Assault, ironically. Um, because I, I do. You do? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I... okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Star Fox Assault. Uh, uh, on the surface, it's kind of. Well, the first thing that comes to everyone's mind is the on foot, and that's really love hate for everyone. Personally, I liked it. I didn't hate Although it. Although it, <laughs> it could have been better, mind you. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed it, and it was nice to, like, you know, play as Fox and walk around and actually shoot things like he should be doing. And you can also, uh, depending on the mission, you can go in and out of an R-Wing or Landmaster. And I thought that was a really cool addition of the series, and it make, it gives you a good feel of being, like, a mercenary group of intergalactic space animals. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just love this game, sorry. Um, but yeah, also, Star Fox Assault was a bit more linear than the last... Well, a, a the bit, first two a games. A bit more linear. It wasn't even, like... It was, yeah, it was linear. linear. Yeah. Like, what, yeah, was there no branching pathways? from mission pathways. to mission. No. And that, that is a shame, because that's what Star Fox is about, in my opinion. And then right. replaying the game and going to the other branches and stuff. But yeah, Assault did that, which is a shame. And I will detu- deduct points from it for that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Assault is a solid game, but not solid enough. The on-rail arguing sections are really good, but there's, like, four or three of them, and it kind of makes you want more, and that's a shame. But there you go. That's what Namco did. One Thanks, thing, Namco. I'll, yeah, one thing I'll <laughs> say about that game, and, like, you said... You said something like it was good, but it could have been better. Like that's how I feel about the game in general. Like it was good, but it could have been better. Like I felt like it was. I felt like it was better. Really, it was really short. Like Like, it was really short. It was. Yeah, the controls were kind of like not slippery. They were the opposite of slippery. They were like too. They they were too tank like. I think. Right. Um, On the on foot portions, not the hard wing (laughs) stuff. Um, or the tank or the tank or the tank itself. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I actually liked it being tank like when I was in the tank. Um, but, uh, yes. but yeah, I just, I don't have a whole lot to say just cause it's kind of like, yeah, it was good. It wasn't as remarkable as Star Fox Adventures just though, just because like it wasn't doing anything new. It was just trying to be Star Fox 64 2.0 and 
Well, I did try new things like on foot and switching in and out of um, vehicles and stuff. And it that really divided uh, opinions on everyone. Like See, didn't I, like I didn't it. mind the on foot stuff. My problem, just the game was just too short. It didn't have enough really going for it. The multiplayer, I remember, was really good. Yeah. That was my favorite thing of that game. It's probably the best multiplayer in the series, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that, actually. I remember um, playing with my brother yet again and losing all the time. Good times. Chris, we should play that when you come to America. Oh, do you have Star Fox Assault? Yeah, I have all these games, dude. Oh, man. I'm, hey, I'm looking forward to that now. I'm going to do a game collection <laughs> video again because I added a lot more games to my collection. But uh, let's move on. i got nothing else for that one. Well, I've got something I want to oh, say. Oh, you do? Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. I thought even you though I haven't uh... played the game, uh, I, I always felt like the fact that they included like ground combat was kind of a byproduct of... Uh, of the fact that adventures existed like like from a gameplay design continuity uh standpoint they had this game that was completely dedicated to playing as a person rock like running around and then you try to go back to the 64 gameplay do you kind of basically ignore the fact that that game ever happened or do you try to like people obviously were interested were introduced to Star Fox in adventures like somebody out there never played 64 but they played adventures so <laughs> if they see a, the next star fox game and it has nothing to do with adventures from a gameplay perspective then like what the heck so they i felt like they were pressured to kind of create something out of all of the games yeah, that they, came before. they did that well um, yeah but i kind of wonder what they're going to do moving forward with that because again it wasn't as well received as they would have hoped so yeah with um star fox assault it tried to sort of like uh, Star Fox Adventures, it was, you know, uh, Star Fox was just shoved in there. But I did like how they actually tried to make it so it, it didn't seem that way from a gameplay perspective and a story perspective from like Crystal and Dinosaur Planet or AKA Saria. Right. And that, that was good. It shows that, I don't know, I kind of hate it when like they just ignore a game like in any, in anything. Yeah, even so if it was trash, thing. like... Did you like hate it when Wolverine Nintendo ignored... Out. I'm sorry, did you hate it when Nintendo ignored the Zelda CDI games, just out of curiosity? Well, those are hilariously bad, so... Um, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, I forgot what I was going to say. Thank you. I'm sorry. That was, very, <laughs> that was a very important tangent, let's be honest. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. Um, but Assault, good game. Could be a lot better. Yep. Okay, um, next one and last one. Uh, and this this is the only game on the list that none of us have played except Chris. Uh, and this is... Oh, Star- really? Yeah, Star Fox Command. Oh, wow, okay. Tell us a little so, bit about this game, because I really know nothing about how this game works. I know absolutely nothing about it. I own it, I have not played it, have not looked up any details. I just knew that it was Star Fox, and I was kind of OCD about adding it to my collection. <laughs> wow, Collectors. okay. So go, Chris, this is your time. Okay, so for some reason, there's a lot of command haters out there, and those people make me sad inside. Uh. <laughs> because, like, Star Fox Command is a really, like, good Star Fox game, and I don't understand the hate. Basically, the game the game isn't on rails at all, so I guess, well, it is a little bit, but I guess that's why some people hate it. But, um... You start the game, and the game has a lot of branching pathways, which is amazing. <laughs> and and that also branches into story plots as well. There's actually like nine endings. Whoa! Is there an official ending? Um. Well, the first ending you get sort of makes the most sense, but there isn't an official right. one. Gotcha. But we'll see if Star Fox U does, uh, leads on from Command or not. I'm curious now, is Star Fox Command, like, do the endings, like, how are they going to make all those different endings work in with the story in the next game? Is that why we haven't had a Star Fox game? Because they don't know how to, they don't know how to consolidate the story? That's not the reason, no. It could be, who knows? No, I know it's not. All the different endings, all the different endings are like, um, oh, what would happen if this happened? And then that's how they would leave their lives that way. Like, one ending is um, a spoof on F-Zero, where Falco and Fox join the G-Zero series. So that's a joke ending. Spoiler alert. So they're, ju- so they're just joking now? Well, oh, wait a no, minute. No, no, they're not all jokes. Some of them are quite serious, actually, sort of. <laughs> well, like, one um, of them 
It's like Fox and Crystal breaking up, isn't it? Yeah. That's pretty but, major. And then, and then Crystal, like, joins Stoll. What? You know? Oh yeah, my gosh, they're never yeah. going to be able to fix this story now. It's become no. <laughs> it's become the Zelda timeline. There's now, <laughs> not complicated. There's now nine different timelines. You have to publi- publish no. uh, Lilat and Storia. <laughs> uh, and I'll buy that. I'll buy Star Fox Histor- Historia. It can't be called Hi- like, like Historia, that's like alliteration, right? You have to call it Lilat Lore or something. Lilat oh, Lore, that's brilliant. I like it. I'm going to buy that, even though it doesn't exist. Um, I'll make it. I'll write it. I'll buy it. Coming from the ZB, <laughs> Lilat Lore. <laughs> yeah, let's let's not uh, announce that yet. Yet? What uh, are you saying yet for? It? Ever? Never ever? <laughs> Never? Okay. Um. Anyway, come on. Uh, so, like, from a gameplay perspective, like, how is it different? Because oh, I know yes. with the DS so, game, um, I feel like it's one of those games that suffered from like trying to force touch controls on a game that didn't really need it or something like that. But well, that's I actually what, didn't like, mind that's what I the hear. touch controls. Uh, I thought they worked pretty well, and you could press like any button to shoot, and so you could maneuver your hand in whatever way you found best. But the way the game is structured is you go from mission to mission, and some will make you go to this pathway or the other pathway. And the game's set up so you, each mission is a all range mode sort of thing, like in sixty four, and you sort of have to shoot a number of targets to pass. And, oh, also the main feature, um, on Star Fox 2, which was the unreleased game for the SNES, then they incorporated a, like a map strategy feature, which was interesting. And they actually brought this idea back for Command. So you'd sort of draw your little ships, like you'd have Fox, Falco, Slippy and Crystal, and you'd move them around and go into enemies and bases. And then you'd like do the little mission, clear that and um proceed forwards so it's kind of a bit strategy and then when you meet the enemies that's when you do the classic star fox gameplay although it's not on rails it's all range mode sort of right oh, i talked a lot there but <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the so, gist of so it so how would you rate it then well i love the game i haven't played it for a while i'm i'm actually hoping to um replay the series in up leading up to Star Fox U's release and then maybe write like a retrospective thing on the ZB.net. Ugh. But yeah, that's that's what I'm planning on doing. So yeah, I have like nothing to say on command, so I guess Yeah, I mean either. We can <laughs> trust your judgment well, and I mean do you think I'm hoping I explained it. Yeah, I, mean, I think it makes sense. Um but I think that, I guess like, I'm that's not a okay, good way though. To... You have to understand. Yeah, I don't like. What do you think is the reason for that? Is I it think just because uh, Piddles hates it for some reason. Or Piddles someone... hates everything. <laughs> yes. So leading true. into into the next upcoming Star Fox game on Wii U, well, do you oh, feel well, like yeah. Command should be regarded as like a, a heavy, like a a substantial part of the Star Fox? series that they like continue it from a story standpoint or do you feel like maybe we should like go back and retcon or something i don't know off the top of my head i can't like the first you when you play through the game the first ending you get is like linear and that's what you get but then you play for it again and go to the other branches i can't remember what the main ending was but it was something like oh they saved the day and now they're all happy and <laughs> or something like that right they should have a game for each of the endings. <laughs> well, you know what? They That's... did. Miyamoto did say that they were like considering episodic content. Do you remember that? That that quote. Oh yeah. What if they did no, like they a Star said, Fox? Um, uh, you know how like Star Fox sixty four or Star Fox in general sort of presented in a movie sort of way. Mm-hmm. Like, have you seen like the poster for Star Fox sixty four? It literally yeah. looks like a movie poster. <laughs> right. I think I'm thinking when he said about the episodic or TV show thing, he was in reference to that, which is kind of weird. And I don't think they'll do it in episodes, like you know when games release parts in um separate game part episodes. But maybe I don't know. I doubt it. 
But yeah, that's interesting to think about. It doesn't seem like the kind of thing Nintendo would do, but what I was thinking was like maybe they would do it like in DLC instead of like actual retail games like Walking Dead Season 1, Season 2, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that that seems like an interesting way to, to follow up the nine storylines that are apparently going on, including Fox and Falco <laughs> being part of the G-Zero circuit. <laughs> Which, play that and which is it. the most ridiculous thing I ever heard, by the way. Although it well, does, hey, that's how they'll finally make a new game. That, yeah, it's going to be a Star Fox F Zero Metroid hybrid. Yeah, it's going to have all those characters. <laughs> uh, Although the Star Fox space. and F Zero series do reference each other a lot. Super <laughs> Super Space Brothers. <laughs> they call it Super Space Brothers. Yeah, and one sister. And <laughs> yes, but anyway, I think it's time to move on uh, to the uh, the Wii U game. And there's not well, a lot that we could. Uh, well, we don't know we a lot about it. We could mention the remake. We well, can talk yeah. about the remake. No, we don't need to touch the I don't remake. Think it, I don't think it needs. I mean, we're running low. It's a great remake. Here, buy so. it. So. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Buy it for sure. 64 okay. is great. 3DS is great. 64 plus 3DS <laughs> equals amazing. <laughs> I was gonna try to come up with a number, but okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So Starfuck so recently, you. recently, uh, Miyamoto's been doing uh, interviews with some of the bigger YouTubers out there like uh, Smosh and iJustine. And there have been little tiny details from about Star Fox that have been coming from these interviews. Nothing huge. Uh, he's basically reiterated the fact that the gamepad is going to display like an in-cockpit, like really combat-focused view where the TV will be displaying something will, which he calls more cinematic. Uh, I don't really know what that means. Because I thought the TV would just display like your average like your Star average, Fox yeah, game. Exactly. Yeah. It means that Star Wars is going to be on the TV while you're playing Star Fox <laughs> on the gamepad. <laughs> right. Um, but but instead of the Star Wars, it's going to be the George Lucas remaster Star Fox edition where everybody is slippy. Every character is <laughs> slippy. But <Okay>. yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm a little bit concerned that they're going to try to reinvent the wheel in a way that doesn't turn out. But on the other hand, they've been doing a really good job this generation coming up with gameplay that that at least utilizes the gamepad in a way that isn't terrible, even if it's like, less meaningful. Unlike the 3DS, or not the 3DS, the original DS, like, Nintendo has done such a good job with not overusing the gamepad like, and making it just ridiculous. Right, like, if anything, it's been underused. With the exception of the uh, Nintendo Land, probably, um, mm. which you know, whatever. Well, I mean, those those experiences were very focused on the gamepad. And I think right. they're all simple enough that they worked just fine. But they there's didn't a lot go of people over... out there that um, sorry, there's a lot of people out there that think the gamepad still isn't being used, and I'm just like, it is. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, mean, I just think they they don't need it to be like this big revolutionary thing. It's just a thing. Right. It's a tool. It's a tool to use it's when you have an idea thing. that uses it. Like, yes. they were trying to create the next Wii remote, but they, they just didn't need to do that. Right. That's what it yeah, seemed like. Well, I think some people perceive the gamepad as their attempt at trying to do something as revolutionary as the Wii remote, uh, which it isn't. But either way. So, yeah, I don't really know where they're going to take the next Star Fox game from a story perspective, because there's so much that they can draw from with all these past games that are so diverse. And with Miyamoto at the helm, I, will, I almost wonder, because this is the first uh, in-house Nintendo-developed Star Fox game, and Miyamoto is not the kind of guy who is going to pick up the threads, the story threads of what those guys have developed, right? Like, it's yeah. so much deeper than what he would have been comfortable working with. And we've seen that he's like, no, Mario Galaxy just didn't have this much story. Uh, I don't <laughs> know how he feels about Star Fox having that much story, but I, I do wonder what he's going to do with that. Or if he's even going to care if it's, it's really up to somebody else. But I, I don't know. I've always it's been really, curious. Like, how like can a, you... Sorry, how can you be a game developer and just be like, yeah, we're not going to do story. Like, as a as a developer of a very well-known franchise like Mario and just say like, okay, yeah, we're just going to throw the story out the window and just not even try. They didn't well, even that's try. His, that's his vision of Mario. It's just it's like, weird. It's weird to me. Shallow. He wants but Mario that, that to be can't, shallow. That can't be his vision for Star Fox, though, because there was a there was a story in Pikmin three. You well, know? yeah, I don't I don't imagine that is his vision. Well, for Star, Star Fox, Fox has always had a bit of a story, right? And had more of a story with the other de- developers like Namco and stuff. Oh, with Namco especially. Yeah, yeah, and even with Zelda, I mean, he's he's 
par- partially involved in Zelda, but we all know that Zelda is kind of Nintendo's heaviest story franchise that they have, really. Maybe aside from mm. Metroid. Um, but it's kind of a wild card, this next Star Fox. It's going to be interesting, for sure. I, f- I feel like this is their chance to kind of reestablish what Star Fox is as a, as a franchise. So, so don't, always, so don't um, screw it up, basically. Yeah, basically, because <laughs> if this one sucks, it like, might be the last Star Fox ever. You know? Seriously, I think you're right. I was I was really surprised to see it was announced. To be honest, it's like, oh yeah, we're making a new Star Fox, and I was like, that's true. When they announced <laughs> that at E3, I was kind of shocked. The way they did it, I thought was kind of weird. Like they didn't even make a big deal. Like, yeah, we're doing Star Fox, by the way. Like, you know, yeah. oh, no fanfare, not at all, really. I well, mean, they, they of were course, clearly we didn't not like... prepared to to announce it, but they needed to because of the pressure of is there anything coming for Wii U? Is it worth buying? Well, uh, uh, mm-hmm. we have we 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 have a Star Fox. Actually, um, here it is. Uh, it's still really, really undercooked. In fact, we haven't even mixed all of the ingredients together. It's been like in development, like not long before E three, last E three. What I and it's yeah. supposed to release before Zelda. What I year. heard was there was a Star Fox game originally in development for Wii that got uh, not not canned, but they just didn't really do anything with it. This was back in like two thousand nine. I wonder if they took concepts from that game and are sticking it in this one because that'd be interesting. Um, yeah, I'm sure they played around with the Wii. Have you ever um, uh, have you ever played WarioWare Smooth Moves? Any of you? Yes. Um, oh, are you going to reference the the SNES thing? I am. Yeah, because those <laughs> controls for with the Wii Remote worked really well. And if that's any um, if that's any like uh, reflection of what the gamepad's controls are going to be like, I think that's a good thing. I think those controls are very good. Yeah, that was fun with the Wii Remote. But the thing is, I wouldn't. I don't want to control a whole Star Fox game with motion controls. I'm just imagining myself aiming with the gamepad and moving around the room like a madman. <laughs> and yeah. that's not very... Um, I mean, it's, it's it'll be fun, but I don't want to do it all the time, you know? Yeah. yeah. So we'll I'm hoping see. there's not too much use of that. And um, if I could sort of just uh, describe my ideal Star Fox game for a second. Go ahead, let's, let's wrap this up. The Wii U, like... I think the Star Fox series has a lot of potential... And the Wii U can sort of deliver on this. Like, I'm talking about like a Star Fox 64 and steroids and with elements of assault with better on for online and co-op multiplayer, you know? Doesn't that just sound amazing to you guys? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, if I'm hoping one day Star Fox can achieve this potential. Maybe with this game, who knows? I mean, it's like Hex said, if it, if it doesn't achieve that potential, what are the odds there's actually going to be another Star Fox game? Like, it, the series has been kind of... Wishy-washy. Uh, yeah, I mean, wishy-washy is really the best, the best phrase, and I go back to what I said at the beginning. Like, this is a franchise that has really only had one great game, and uh, I'd love to yeah, see that true. change, um, but who knows? And until then, until we see more, we really can't even make a statement on that, so... That's on you, Nintendo. Listen so to here, us. Here we are. Yeah. Heed our warning. Hey, and you Nintendo, do this right. Nintendo, if you're listening to this show, uh, new F Zero, please. Uh, and also <laughs> new Metroid, please. And uh, and just just I don't know. I don't know. Do you have any requests for Nintendo? Uh, yeah. While we have you on the uh, phone, Nintendo, I'd also like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would also like. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Uh, yeah. Mo- yeah. And let's Mother uh, Four, yes. But actually, make it Mother, Mother Four. Can we just get making Mother Four? Can we just get Mother One through Three, or Mother One and Three in English, please? Like, and yeah, Mother true, One man. in English. <laughs> I mean, uh, do we? Yeah, not, no. not really. We have an official translation of it, at least. Just Earthbound. Okay. Well, AKA Mother Two. Yeah, they do have a translation of it. It's just that they decided not to sell it. Yeah. And just they jerks. had a fan translation of Mother Three, but they won't accept it. Right. What is wrong with this company? What? Why would? Whatever. <laughs> We're going downhill now. Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo doomed. Okay, that's enough for this. That's <laughs> on uh, other podcasts. Like people are like, oh yeah, we can that's, have it, that's it for a show on, on our a, show. Let's have a Nintendo doomed episode all about how Nintendo is doomed. We should do that. Every, everything bad. We'll do about it on April second. Okay. Let's get uh, let's get Dan for that show. The Nintendo yes. doomed show. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Old cake man. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, the episode did end up getting a little bit longer than I thought it would, but we still managed to keep it. What I think a surprise. Under, I think we kept it under 50 minutes. We had a lot of audio problems, so if, if there's some awkward segues, that's why. Um, but otherwise, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked our show. Also, don't be afraid to give us thumbs up. Leave a comment if you thought uh, this episode was good or bad or whatever. Talk about Star Fox. Do whatever you want. Also, we do accept user questions. I do want to start doing those again, which I feel like I say every other episode, but <laughs> I do want to do user questions. So if you got any, put them in the comments. Yeah, flood, a, flood us with user questions so we have no choice but to, to actually do something with them. Yes, that's... And cookies. And cookies, too. And flood cookies. us with cookies. And click on the ads. I want to drown in crumbs. <laughs> uh, okay, so and don't forget to click on the ads and all that stuff. Uh, open up 100 tabs if you have to. <laughs> so that's it. That's it uh, for uh, Hex Zyber, Mr. Chris from Britain. This is Spiegel. This was the ZBN podcast, the Star Fox episode. Thank you all so much for listening. Have a good. And with that, I think we have <laughs> cut off again. <laughs> oh, right. The last second. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>